Riding Hood. You know the story, but every story has more than it tells. As they say, don't tell the book by its cover. Unless the cover is for a specific hot novels, usually with some people topless, maybe making out. In which case, you can judge this book by cover, especially if it has a title like My Mafia Boss, My Stalker Boss, and My Psycho Boss. Because in 99.9% .9 of the time, these guys really had no salvation and you were going to be right. But going back to Little Head Dragon Hood, her story is a classic. But this story here is very different. Because my friends, it is with great pride that I tell you that Little Head Dragon Hood went crazy and someone would have winked at us. Or maybe not. Yo, Joy here, and to talk about what? A movie with dubious animation quality and questionable images. But if it weren't for that, it would probably be neck and neck with Shrek, because the story is sensational. And if you are a Brazilian baby born in the 90s, you probably saw this movie in a program called Sessão da Tarde. And I say more. You probably watched this movie on a pirate DVD with unparsed advertisements inside. Oh yeah, things here are so good. But now they are better with all the streamings and all kind of. And if you are not from Brazil, please let me know how did you watch this movie first? In a normal way or in a crazy, maybe legal, alternative way? Who do you think it will bring Little Head Riding Hood with the biggest eyes you will ever see? And she still has the courage to judge other people's eyes. Your face looks really weird, Granny. Uh, your mouth doesn't move when you talk. Uh, plastic surgery. Whoa. What big hands you have. And what big ears you have. All the better to hear your... Many criticisms. And Granny, what big eyes you have. Are we just gonna sit around here and talk about how big I'm getting? And this story is told by the point of view of four characters. Little Head Riding Hood herself, Grandma, the Wolf, and the Woodsman. And for us to start, I will give you a contest. The forest is in panic because the good bandit is stealing the recipes from the bakeries and making the bakeries bankrupt. And in this scenario, the big bad wolf invades grandma's house, pretends to be grandma, tries to sneak little head riding hood's basket, grand is tied up in the closet, and the woodsman comes in through the window, looking like a war tank, smashing everything. Everyone was arrested, and now they have to explain themselves. Red is in a rebellious teenage phase. She wants to see the world, but people think she is still too young to do things, so she is content to be the eye food of mm. that time. Basically, she delivers her grandmother's recipes, and her grandmother is the biggest confectioner in the entire forest. But at the same time, she is just a retired elderly woman who wants to watch soap operas. I decided to call Granny. If anyone would know what to do, she would. I don't know what to do. I'm just a tired old lady. But I have to go now. My program's on. Kisses. And when the recipe starts to get stolen and the bakery starts to close, Little Head Riding Hood fears that Grandma is going to be next and that Granny will go bankrupt. And it looks like she's right, because the rock with the words, you are next, is struck from the window of her house. And here is the thing, the recipe's book is in the safe of the family at Red's house, and she decides to take this book, throw the Mondays to Grandma's house, because she thinks it's safer, even though it's a super hyper dangerous trip. Or not so much. 
good because she makes this trip rather quickly. And I just keep thinking, those people created the recipes, they made the recipes every day for who knows how many years and they still don't know the ingredients. All right. And I am the weird one for not having memorized all the capitals of my country and not knowing the whole multiplication table by heart. Something is not right. Tell me what information people think you should know, but you do not. Quem não tem tanto de vidro pra tirar a primeira pedra? But anyway, Little Head Riding Hood is going to Grandma's house and on the way she meets Boingo, a rat she occasionally gives some sweets. Boingo had two jobs, confectioner's helper and cable car transporter. But he was fired from his first job because the bakery where he worked went bankrupt due to the theft of recipes. And I can say I did this. At that moment, I had two main suspects. First one, Woodsman. Because his face says pants chief very clear. And second, Bunny Boy. Because he looks like a good guy, proper for a thief called Good Bandit. And he seems to carry evil within his heart. <laughs> and between these two, my main suspect was the rat. Because check out the scene. <laughs> Doesn't it look like he's trying to get the basket with the book of recipes instead of trying to help Red? You don't fool me, good bandit. I have read Sherlock Holmes, dear. Did a red riding hood falls off the cable car right in front of the big bad wolf. And the wolf wants to know what's in the basket. Red managed to escape from the wolf and she meets Jay, a goat that only speaks by singing. Could you stop singing for one moment? No, I can't. I wish I could. But a mountain witch done put a spell on me 37 years ago. And now I gotta sing everything I say. At the house of the singing goat, Red calls Grandma, and it looks like Grandma is in the middle of the snow, but Little Head Riding Hood only hears his screams, so she believes Grandma is in danger, and that's why she looks for a shortcut to Grandma's house. And after a lot of singing, she and Jay takes the tunnel while an avalanche chase them both. And then BOOM! Red makes it to Grandma's house. But as you know, Red is going to find a wolf dressed up as Grandma. Grandma is tied up in the closet and the woodman is going to come in, break in the window and everyone is going to be a rat. Big Bad Wolf or Shiva as he prefers to be called. So, Mr. Wolf, may I call you Wolf? You can call me Sheila. I like long walks and fresh flowers. Quit playing around, Wolf! Yeah, I'm kidding. It was just a wolf prank. His real name is Wolf W. Wolf, and he is a reporter. Which I suspected when I saw a photographer's curl with him. It turns out that the big bad wolf works undercover, and he has been on the case of the Goody Bandit for six months. And his main suspect has become Little Head Riding Hood because she's the one who has most contact with sweets in the entire forest, according to himself. Source voices from the wolf's head. And for more information, he goes to one of his informants. Wolf words, a ship. I found the character very realistic. He only remembered the information as the money comes in. All right, here in my country, it would probably be less money and more slaps on the face, but I thought the dynamic was very cool. What do you hear about the goodie bandit? What do I know from goodies? Hiya, Twitchy. I want to know about the little girl in the red hood. Don't know a thing, never heard of her. 
Little red. In the end, the bad wolf wasn't even that bad. After Woolworth's information, the wolf finds out that Little Red Riding Hood is on the cable car. He sees her on the cable car. He sees her falling from the cable car. The two met. She runs away. He goes after her. He falls on the river. And then he finds the rabbit. My suspect number one. The rabbit pretends not to understand what is happening. And he immediately starts giving very questionable directions to a supposed shortcut to grandma's house so the wolf can get there before Little Head Riding Hood because the rap got into his head that the wolf wants to go to grandma's house because of a secret party he is a goddamn fanfic writer I am watching you sweet tooth that questful shortcut from the caves turns out to interconnect to the shortcut from the tunnels the same Little Head Riding Hood took, but a few seconds earlier, and to it, a photographer's girl who works for the wolf lights a candle. Except that candle is dynamite and explodes a piece of the rail. Wow, that's nice and bright. What kind of candles are those? <sighs> Bean of meat pain. Oh, must be Italian. And that's why, in the version of Little Head Riding Hood, the cable car was left without the rail and she had to fly using her hood. The wolf comes to Granny's house, but no one is home, so the wolf goes in, uses Granny's promotional material to dress up as Grandma, and why anyone would need or want Granny's mask is beyond my understanding, and I think it's better if you don't understand at all. And when the wolf goes to hide with in the closet, we discover Granny is tied up inside. That is, Grandma was a rat in the closet when the wolf arrived. But the wolf doesn't even have time to react because Little Head Riding Hood arrives, knocking on the door, and the rest you already know. Red will find the wolf in Grandma's place. See, Grandma is tied up in the closet, and the woodsman is going to come in, drop the window, breaking everything. The woodsman is not even a woodsman. His name is Kirk. He aspires to be an actor, but it looks like it's not going to happen. Yeah, so listen. We'll look at your tape and we'll give you a call, okay? Thanks for coming in. Have a nice one. Next! So, meanwhile, he drives a can on a stick truck. And I love can on a stick. I have never eaten that. But the sweet cooked by Kirk looks like something else on a stick. And this boy with the face of someone who has been eating too much bad candies is stick up the damn sweet in his nose. Mmm. And Kirk's day, which wasn't being one of the best, became even worse when his truck was stolen faster than you can put the phrase. And the goody bandit, in addition to taking the rice peas, even took the poor guy's wheels. But guys, how hard is to put a damn can in my stick? I didn't even know it needed a rest before that and guess who is around the corner when the theft happens boy who the rabbit and he says the following sentence chin up mister maybe someday somebody will open up a great big goodie shop and we can all work for that little guy if that is not suspicious i don't know what is and the woodsman may not be the smartest little head in the class but even he finds Boimbo's sentence suspicious but his reasoning is cut off when he receives a call from the person responsible for the auditions he did saying that the client actually liked his test but that he needs to become a real woodsman basically wax whatever comes his way imagine if the audition was for a serial killer and when he's finishing cutting a big giant freaking tree 
He hears red scream with distracts him And the tree he was cutting starts rolling behind him He starts to run and falls inside grandma's house Breaking the window And the rest he already know Little Red Riding Hood was in grandma's house The wolf was pretending to be grandma Grandma was tied up and the fake woodman arrived breaking everything Grandma is the queen of sweets but more than that She is a tattooed grandma beyond radical She had dozen of medals and trophies in many sports and is certainly more attractive than I will ever be. And Grandma didn't want Little Head Riding Hood to go to her house to take the rested book because instead of watching soap operas, as she said she was doing, she was in a snow championship. And guess who is there next to her pretending to be a fan? I will give you a hint. He's a bunny. He looks cute, but he's probably a raspy tit. And it's why a granny bucket is riding down the mountain that red calls. And the scream she heard is grandma's war cry because she's kicking ass against the opposing team. The opposing team was hired by the movie's villain, literally. Who do you work for? We were hired by the bandit. And they try to get rid of grandma, but she know what she's doing. Incidentally, she's the one who started the avalanche of snow, and she not only wins the championship in first place, but the mirrors that Red thought she saw ordering her to use her hood as a parachute was really grandma in flesh and blood and with coats a red changed and grandma probably killed hundreds of animals with the avalanche she created but who am i to judge well it's not every day someone has a grandma like that what's the most radical or crazy thing your grandma has ever done? Tell me in the comments. Grandma arrives home by parachute through the chimney and she sees the wolf and tweet approaching her home. But when she enters through the chimney, the parachute gets stuck in the ceiling fan, which was on even without anyone in the house. And here I thought Granny's remark economical. You understand? Granny tangles with the parachute cards and is thrown into the closet. Grandma managed to open the closet door using the squirrel. Yeah. And the rest, you already know. Little Head Riding Hood was there. The wolf was pretending to be Grandma. Grandma comes out of the closet and the woodsman arrives breaking everything. And now that we have seen the four versions, Little Head Riding Hood is having an existential crisis because she thought she and her grandmother shared all their secrets, but it's not really like that. Her grandmother had a secret life and even worse, her grandmother was a hypocrite because she didn't but Little Head Riding Hood to do things she considered dangerous while she herself was a red coat granny and lied about it. Honestly, I think it's okay for grandmothers to have their secret lives. That's great! The elderly worked so hard to do whatever they want later in life. And I do understand her worrying about red but lying is always bad. So, minus three points to Grandma Bucket. And now that the moment reflection has passed, I want to bring to life that apart from the moment these four characters meet, the only thing they have in common is that their path at some point somehow crossed with Boingo the Bunny. Coincidence? 
I don't think so. Elementary, my dear toy. And while the pockets had a relationship argument, someone sneaks into the house and steals the rest book. Concurrently, Inspector Flippers has the same conclusion I did. And all police cars race down the mountain chasing the rest who really is the copyright. However, the police are going in the wrong place, so they need to give coffee to Tweet as Curvorite talks at a 3x speed without anything, so he can read the police in time and warn them that they are going in the wrong direction. At the same time, Grandma the Wolf and the Woodsman kind of are going after Bongo and Red because Red saw Bongo stolen the Red Piss book, went after him, confronted him, ended up losing, got arrested by Bongo, and now is having to watch a slight presentation about Bongo's evil clan. What a dedicated villain! Bongo intends to send Red home in the Dynamite Express, which is nothing than a cable car full of explosives to blow up the competition and Little Head Riding Hood. But the combo Granny, Wolf, and Woodsman are there to save the day. More Granny and the Wolf. And meanwhile, poor Little Tweet is still trying to make the cops to get what he's talking about. What's he saying? Little Head Riding Hood starts to go down the mountain in a cable car without brakes, full of explosives, and Grandma Pocket goes after her in a form of cupcakes. In this world, we're going to see things caring. The evil gang goes after Grandma. Grandma manages to save Little Head Riding Hood. And the police finally decipher what Tweet was saying by slowing down his speech through a tape recorder. The criminal you're looking for cannot be found at the bottom of the mountain. Hmm? And all the bad guys are arrested. And for those who are wondering about the wolf and the woodsman, they're driving down the mountain in a truck like normal women beings. And everyone had a happy ending or a deserved one, I guess. The rat was arrested, the recipes were returned, Little Head Riding Hood and Grandma made up, the singing goat became the new delivery man, the wolf wrote his article, the woodsman became an actor in a musical, and Tweet, Grandma, Little Head Riding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf joined the secret organization happily ever after. To win, Agent Flippers is also a member, and now they are secret agents. That is it, folks. I think this movie is genius. I had watched this movie before, but I think I was too young because I didn't remember a thing and it was great to watch it again. This movie is from 2005 and some rumors say that the animators were learning how to animate while animating the movie. If it is me or true, I don't know. But for me, despite this animation not being the best, and this I say, in terms of design, the story makes up for it a lot. Just watch this scene. It's pretty creepy. Right, yes, yes. But we don't arrest people for being creepy. Yeah, Bruce, know that guy we got in the tank? Uh, the creepy one? Yeah, better let him go. The dialogues are well thought out, the movie is super fun, and the script is tight, well constructed. I confess, I did prefer the Brazilian dubbing because they put more emotion, but the English version was quite great too. For me, Hoodie Wicked is the proof that a good animation doesn't save a bad script, but a good script can save a not so good animation. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please let me know. 
English is not my first language and I'm still learning it, so thank you very much for your patience. There are other movies like Hoodwinked with other characters that I have never seen and if you want, I can bring them to the channel with great pleasure. Just let me know in the comments. But now I want to know, what's your favorite scene in the movie? For me, pretty much every wolf scene is iconic. Don't I get a drink? No. What, what did you say your name was? Shaw, Rick Shaw, Myth from Japan. What do you do for a living, Mr. Wolf? I'm a shepherd. Hey. Uh. Yo, can we eat? Sure. You hungry for failure? Maybe a side of unemployment? Because that's what's for lunch. The first walker 